Welcome to the Cinch SPFL Scottish Football Roundup with all the best bits from the weekend Cinch Championship, League One and League Two action. Coming up, Callum Gallagher fires the diamonds to a big win over Thistle, Ryan Oney steals the show as Aki's go top of League One and Bradley Barrett scores a stunner for the Rosie Posey. Starks Park was the scene of an early season championship thriller as Jack Hamilton kick-started matters after five minutes, turning Lewis Vaughan's cutback into the net. Dylan Easton unlocked the defence and Hamilton was on hand to bag his first Rovers goal. Vaughan was presented with the chance to double the home side's advantage 14 minutes in when referee David Monroe pointed to the spot. The striker dusted himself down to beat former teammate Jamie McDonald for his second goal of the season. Morton immediately set about reducing the deficit and did so in style. Lewis McGrattan's flighted cross from the right was begging to be met and Robbie Muirhead duly obliged with a thumping header past Kevin Dabrowski. Back-to-back -back goals in the league for Morton's number nine, who is such a big character in Doogie Emery's side. Muirhead played a part in the equaliser, sending over this corner which fell to Robbie Crawford who turned the ball home in a crowded penalty area. The 29-year-old has rejuvenated his career in Morton Colours, this his fifth goal in just six matches this season. Parity lasted only five minutes as Callum Smith intercepted Kirk Broadfoot's pass on the halfway line before driving towards goal and slotting past McDonald. Great stamina and composure by the 23-year-old who has impressed since arriving from Airdrie. Wraith had the chance to settle the match when Ethan Ross was brought down in the box with referee Monroe once again awarding a spot kick. But this time Jamie McDonald stood strong to deny Josh Mullen with his outstretched foot. 3-2 the final score. Ruri Payton has already made himself at home at Lesser Hamden after his move from Queen of the South and he came close to opening the scoring with this curling attempt. The hosts were claiming for a penalty when Dom Thomas' strike was blocked by Ricky Little but it wouldn't be long before the Spiders broke the deadlock. Queens nudged themselves in front when Jack Spong found Peyton on the edge of the box who delivered to the back post for Barry Hepburn to score. Good awareness from Peyton and a smart finish from the on loan Bayern Munich teenager. Jay Bird has made a promising start to life with our broth but he couldn't get enough on Jermaine Hilton's cross from the left. Queens went looking for a second goal with some slick passing, presenting Toby Robson with a chance, but Little blocked well once more. More fancy footwork opened up another opportunity for the hosts, but Thomas was unable to trouble Derek Gaston's goal. Our both were always in this contest, and they drew level with 20 minutes remaining through Leighton McIntosh. A composed finish from McIntosh after Mark Stow's initial effort was blocked. But the hosts were determined to win three points and despite some last ditch defending, Peyton managed to fire in with 15 minutes to go. A fifth home goal of the season in all competitions for Queen's Park's main man. 
2-1, the final score at Lesser Hamden. Dundee United lit up the opening weekend with their attacking play and they almost got off to the perfect start at Tannadice through Tony Watt's right-footed shot. Dunfermline arrived on Tayside with three points on the board and they showed their intent as Aaron Comrie forced a save from Jack Walton. Comrie was in action at the other end as Scott McMahon's cross from the left bounced off the defender and into the arms of his goalkeeper. Josh Edwards was next to go close, with Kevin Holt required to make a big block to keep the scores level. Into the second half, an on loan pars keeper Harrison Sharp had to live up to his name to flick Matthew Kujo's shot over the crossbar. Craig Whiten made his name with a goal against Dundee United and he produced another here, guiding this cross from Edwards into the net to the delight of the away support. A pinpoint header from Dunfermline's number nine for what was his second goal of the campaign. United refused to give in and they were almost level when Kujo set up a chance for himself with a fine touch before placing the ball just wide of the post. But his moment would arrive five minutes into injury time and it was worth the wait for the home fans. This stunning effort wrong-footing pars keeper Harrison Sharp. Fantastic goal from Kujo, who looks like being a player to watch this season. Airdrie's promotion to the Sins Championship was fueled by Callum Gallagher's goals, and he came close to opening his account for the season from Adam Frizzell's cross. Brian Graham is another forward who knows his way to goal, and the thistle skipper was denied by Josh Ray as he tried to turn Harry Milne's shot into the net. Airdrie fans thought they had taken the lead when Callum Fordyce's shot cannoned off the bar and bounced off the surface, but referee Craig Napier said no goal. James Lyon came into this game with two goals in his last two games, and he made it 3-3 three three as he volleyed in after Josh Ray had palmed away Harry Milne's cross. Could the 20-year-old be a bright young hope for Chris Doolan's Jags this year? Thistle thought they had doubled their lead when Aidan Fitzpatrick's cross was touched in by Graham, but their celebrations were cut short by the linesman's flag. Gabby McGill played a crucial role in the Diamonds playoff run, and he would help turn this match in their favour minutes after coming off the bench. The attacker managed to squeeze the ball home via a deflection off a Thistle defender to breathe new life into the home side. Airdrie took the lead after 71 minutes. Craig Watson made progress down the right wing and his cross from the unmarked Gallagher who guided his header past David Mitchell. A first goal of the season for last year's Cinch League 1 top scorer. Substitutes Lewis Nielsen and Blair Alston combined as Thistle looked for a way back but this effort went just wide of the post. And the offside flag was to deny Graham for the second time as Airdrie held out for their first league win of the season. Air United came into this clash with Inverness looking for their first win of the season. And they got off to an ideal start. New signing Francis Amarty opening the scoring after just eight minutes. Amarty showed Endeavour in the middle of the park to start the move before applying the finishing touch at the end. Air were convinced that they doubled their lead shortly after, this Nick McAllister effort being kept out by Mark Ridgers at the near post. Charlie Gilmore has looked impressive since making his summer switch to the Highlands. 
This shot from Cali's number seven going narrowly wide. Cali kept pushing for a first half equaliser, Charlie Albinson having to be sharp to deny this David Carson effort. Louis Longstaff was next to try his luck for Cali, a curling effort from distance going just wide of the target. On the stroke of half time, a red card was shown to Cali Thistle. Manager Billy Dodds was initially shown a yellow card on the sidelines before being quickly shown a red by referee Peter Stewart. Cali's hunt for a leveller went on into the second half, Nathan Shaw rattling the woodwork with this strike from an acute angle. Ayr had the better of the chances late on, firstly Aidan McGeady flashing this one just past the post. New signing Oli Pendlebury notched his first air goal last weekend, but was denied another by a fine Ridgers save. 1-0 the final score at Somerset Park. Let's take a quick look at the latest standings in the Cinch Championship. Tabletopping Queen's Park are the division's only remaining side with a 100% record after their home win over our broth. Dundee United and Dunfermline Athletic sit either side of Wraith Rovers in the playoff spots after their draw at Tannadice. While Cali Thistle and our Broth are the division's only teams yet to register a point after match day two. Come on, we have a bit of pressure now. Ball crossed in. Gets a touch to it. It's still knocking about. Shouts for handball. Trying to turn, but crowded by players. Still manages to come away with it to Lyon. Out to Corbett. Corbett with some time, tries a low shot. CJ comes to CJ. Keeper almost bobbles it. A chance here for Kelton. It's a great touch from the Hamilton man. Low cross. And it bobbles about. Gurley does enough. It's a corner kick. Good play from the substitute. Plays it out, this could be it. And it's a goal. Good passing play from the substitutes. Making an immediate impact for Hamilton Ackies. It's Kelty Hearts nil, Hamilton one. Thompson with the clearance. on the wrong side play through again crossed over and it's an easy tap in from just outside the six yard box Aki 2 <laughs> the substitute shoots in the corner Falkirk travelled north to Aberdeen sitting top of the table after their opening day win over Annan. But it was the hosts who started quickest, Connor Scully forcing a big save from Sam Long just a minute in. Cover handed a golden opportunity to take the lead early in the second half. The referee spotted a handball in the area from this corner kick and pointed to the spot. New signing Josh Kerr put the ball in his own net last weekend but made up for it with this fine penalty kick to give his side the lead. A powerful strike giving Sam Long no chance. Falkirk levelled the score shortly afterwards though. Great work from Callum Morrison on the right saw the ball turned in at the wrong end by Cove defender Will Gillingham. Fortuitous yes but a reward for Falkirk's positive response to going behind. 
Roman Burrell made the switch from Falkirk to Cove in the summer and he restored the home side's lead on 72 minutes. A misjudged header from Brad Mackay laid it on a plate for Burrell, who duly obliged. Ross McKeever has been excellent since joining Falkirk. He almost drew them level here, his header cracking the post before being gathered by Cove stopper Ballant Demas. And the woodwork would deny McKeever once again in the 90th minute, this time his header hitting the crossbar before being cleared away from danger. But Falkirk's persistence would pay off in dramatic circumstances. Substitute Jordan Allen reacted quickest in the box to poke this one home deep into added time. Pandemonium in the away end and a hard fought point for Falkirk on the road. Former Alwa man Robert Thompson almost came back to haunt his former club on Derby Day, this early header going just wide of the mark. Cammy Clark providing a deft delivery with the former Wasp Thompson unable to apply the finishing touch. Alwa's biggest chance of the half would come towards the end of the first period. David Mackay unable to cushion this volleyed effort on target. The final big chance of the first half would fall to the Beanos. Another dangerous delivery, this time the experienced Paul McLean missing the mark. Dale Carrick continues to be Sterling's main man in every sense. This audacious acrobatic effort would have been a sure fire goal of the season contender had it found its way to goal. Greg Spence is a hero at the Rex for his efforts in an Alwa shirt, but he came close to putting Sterling a goal up, this one hitting the side netting. The big moment Sterling had been looking for came in the 81st minute. A ball over the top of the Alloa backline saw Carrick show David Mackay a clean pair of heels, with the Wasps defender losing his footing and fouling Carrick in the box. Penalty Sterling and a straight red card for Mackay. Carrick stepped up to the plate and dispatched Cooley from 12 yards to much jubilation from the travelling band of Beanos behind the goal. A fine finish and a magical moment for the Sterling faithful. Aloha pushed hard to find a leveller in the dying embers but to no avail. Sterling stood firm to claim all three points and the bragging rights on Derby Day. Montrose travelled to Gala Bank with a point to prove after their opening day home defeat and they opened the scoring after just eight minutes. Craig Brown finding space in the area after some patient play before dispatching beyond Greg Fleming in the Annan net. A first goal of the season for Brown, who bagged seven in all competitions last term. Montrose's second would come on the half hour mark. Mo legend Andrew Steves drove through the middle of the park and dispatched Cooley for 2-0. A first goal since December 2021 for the Lynx Park favourite. And Montrose would find the net again before the break. New signing Kane Hester this time, heading a pinpoint cross back across goal and beyond Fleming. A brilliant finish and a likely sign of things to come from Hester this season. Finlay Cross Adair recently joined Annan on loan from Preston North End. He went close to pulling one back from the edge of the area. Cross Adair would open his Annan account shortly after. A brilliant piece of control and a smart finish for 3-1. Finishing of that nature could see the Englishman become a key player during his loan stint at Gala Bank. Annan would push to find a way back into the game but were unable to find the net again. Josh Galloway going closest, his first time effort grazing the outside of the post. 3-1 Montrose at full time. Queen's made the trip to Meadow Bank for the first away league game of the season. Effie Ambrose almost notched his first goal for the club, going close with an early header. The home side opened the scoring on 14 minutes. 
Ennis Murray heading home at the near post from a fabulous Robbie Mann delivery. A brilliantly timed run and a well executed finish from Murray. Gavin Riley bagged his 100th professional goal last weekend. He was denied goal number 101 by a fantastic block by City defender Jack Wilkie. Kieran McKechnie has started the season brightly for Queen's, but he was unable to convert this free kick after the interval. The away side would continue to threaten. Lee Connolly able to get in behind the Edinburgh backline, but his shot was easily stopped by Andy McNeil. Kyle Doherty was denied a debut goal here. He found space in the area, but dragged his shot wide of the goal. But that debut goal would come for the Queen's forward soon after. Lewis Gibson's excellent cross, finding Doherty, who volleyed home beyond McNeil to level the scores. A perfect start to life in blue for the former Clyde man. And it would get even better for Queen's on 83 minutes. A short corner routine, with the ball being whipped to the back post for Kyle McClellan to nod back across goal and beyond McNeil. A wonderful cross and an even better header from McClellan. But it wasn't all good news, as McClellan saw red for a second bookable offence after his celebrations. City fought to level the game late on, but Queen's hung on for a massive away day victory. 2-1 the final score at Meadow Bank. Now for a look at the cinched League 1 table after match day 2. Hamilton Ackies and Stirling Albion are the early pace setters, having taken maximum points from their opening two games. Falkirk sit in third place and remain unbeaten after their dramatic draw against Cove Rangers. Four sides sit on three points after a win and a loss from their first two fixtures while Edinburgh City and Annan Athletic are yet to register a point this season. Clyde had the best of the early going in their meeting with Bonnie Rig Rose. Barry Cudahy forcing a save from Paddy Martin early on. Slovakian defender Eric Sula almost scored a goal of the season contender when his volley straight from a corner whistled just over the bar. Smart Asadalor has looked bright since joining Bonnie Rig Rose. He looked to get in behind the Clyde backline here, but his eventual shot was well blocked. Ross Forbes has made a name for himself, scoring stunning free kicks over the years, but the experienced midfielder couldn't add to his collection with this effort. Clyde may have had the best of the chances in the first period, but it was Bonnie Rig who broke the deadlock. The ball broke to Jason Jarvis in a crowded penalty area on the stroke of half-time and he was able to slot home beyond Neil Parry. A first competitive goal for the former University of Stirling man. Fraser Malcolm had a fantastic opportunity to notch his first goal for the Bully Wee, but the forward was unable to direct his header on target. Bonnie Rig Rose would find their second and decisive goal late on. Neil Parry found himself in no man's land after coming to clear a long ball, with his clearance dropping to Bradley Barrett, who lofted the ball over the Clyde stopper from all of 30 yards out. A phenomenal goal to top off an excellent away day for the Rose, 2-0 the final score. Clear-cut chances were few and far between in the early going at the Rock. Mark Dernan tried his luck from range, but his effort deflected wide of the goal. The best chance of the half did fall to the Suns, however. From a corner kick, the ball eventually made its way to James Hilton, who controlled beautifully before forcing a super save from Spartans keeper Blair Carswell. Spartans looked more threatening in the second half, than Barton defender Dernan initially making a good block here, with Michael Allen firing the rebound over the bar. Dumbarton were awarded a penalty kick on the 56th minute. Ross McLean's cross hitting the hand of Allen, with referee Colin White pointing to the spot. New signing Tony Wallace scored two goals in the Suns via play cup campaign and notched his first of the league season here, wrong footing Carswell in the process. 
A cool piece of finishing under pressure from Wallace. Spartans made their intentions known in search of an equaliser. A nice move here, with James Cregan flashing the eventual effort wide of the mark. Ross McLean almost doubled the Suns lead late on. He went clean through on goal, but lost his footing at the vital moment, allowing Carswell to gather. The equalising goal would eventually come for the away side. Jamie Dishington firing home an excellent strike in the area from a corner kick. Two goals in two league matches for Dishington, and Spartans remain unbeaten in Cinch League 2. That is something we never had last year, Lawrence, you know, a centre forward like that. No. And Austin wins a free kick, and I'm really not sure about that one. No, don't think so. And it's oh, a red no, card. Referee. That's ridiculous. Uh, well, that is absolutely ridiculous, referee. Well, he's he's a tie. He's, he's set himself a yeah, stall. Yeah, he's set, set himself a stall now, and the, the Stenrar crowd will be. And that's Stenrar a lovely crowd. save from McDonald. Every every tackle that each five make. Austin Austin has switched wings. And Gallagher gets a foot in, but Austin still has the ball. And that was a decent block by James McDonald, Jamie Dolan, James Dolan, Tamor, or on Page cuts inside. And oh, oh, shoots what home. A goal. And what a finish by Tamor! Oh, goal by Tamor! Go on, my son! Oh, and that's a lovely ball out to Jack Healy. Nice Healy see. cuts back nicely, and that's a nice ball in by Healy. And I'll tell you what, yeah. Kieran Miller was close chance, to connecting yeah, with that. A that's chance. a real chance. Healy with a free kick oh, to Austin, front of the box. Lifts it in, and Johnny Page lifts it high, wide, and not so handsome. Good. He's only got Dolan there, here's McDonald making the run, he gets ahead on it. Oh, that's a penalty. He's going to give a penalty. Yes, that's a penalty. Conor McManus with the feet high on James Dolan against Alan Fleming. Comes Armour. And it's saved. Poor penalty, decent save. Ah, oh, he's retake. It. Retake. Now, did he move? I thought he moved, but he was on his line. Interesting one. Armour steps up, and he saves it again. Exactly the same penalty. Why would you do that? He'll get the ball into the box, surely. There's nobody to stop him. No, nope. he's back out to Walls. It's like seeing it come out a yard a wee bit more, oh, isn't he? Oh, he did it in. Oh! Did that hit the post? Or did it yeah, hit it's off? Robo, I think, cleared it. Here is Walls. They've switched round again. Walls in the middle. Healy's on the left. Healy cuts inside, has a go. Oh, and that's surely a foul. No, no, I don't think so, Lord. Don't he, think so. He let it slip, I think. Well, if that's the case, it's poor goalkeeping. I actually thought the keeper was fouled there. Conditions were incredibly windy at Balmour for the visit of Stenhouse Muir, as showcased by this kick out from Blue Toon keeper Blessing Olayemi, which he had to be wise to gather. Peterhead could and probably should have taken the lead after 19 minutes. Conor O'Keefe drove at goal, seeing his initial shot saved by Darren Jameson. Only for Kieran Shanks and Jack Brown to miss the mark on the follow-up. Robert Ward was next to go close for Peterhead, his low-driven effort going narrowly wide of Jameson's goal. Hamish Ritchie tried his luck from a free kick, denied only by the outside of the post. The away side came out of their shell a bit in the second half, Matty Yates almost opening the scoring with this effort. Jordan Kirkpatrick couldn't find the target here, a corner kick dropping to the Steny man with his curling effort going narrowly over the top. and Kirkpatrick went agonisingly close once again. A similar situation and a similar outcome. Conor O'Keefe tried his luck for Peter Head late on, but couldn't pick out the top corner from the edge of the box.
Stenhouse Muir were reduced to 10 men late on when Mikey Anderson saw red for a second bookable offence. But Peterhead couldn't capitalise and the Warriors held on for an away day point. Elgin travelled to Forfar hoping to bounce back from an opening day home defeat. Rory McEwen tested Mark McCallum in the Forfar net on the half hour mark. Forfar went closest in the first period. Kieran Ingles deflected shot going just past the post of Tom McHale's goal. Russell Dingwall hit double figures for goals last season but his effort on the hour mark was never troubling McCallum. Forfar with a side in the ascendancy in the latter stages, Craig Thompson's diving effort going just wide of the target. Tom McHale had to be at his sharpest to prevent this Ryan Patterson volley from ripping the net. Darren Watson almost snatched it at the death for the loons, but couldn't keep his header down, a point apiece in Angus. Here's how the Cinch League 2 table is shaping up. Peterhead, Bonnie Rig Rose and Stranraer are in the upper reaches of the division, with a win and a draw to their respective names. Dumbarton, Spartans, Forfar and Stenhouse Muir remain unbeaten after a pair of draws from their first two outings, while Elgin City, Clyde and East Fife make up 8th to 10th, each with just a single point on the board.